Okay, we got everybody in, Bob? Everybody that was waiting. If others come up late, I will put them in immediately. Okay, I'll open up the meeting then. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Bridgewater Conservation Meeting. Tonight is 725-24. Our next meeting will be August 8th, 24. Um, I just need to read into the meeting for the um, governor's notice. Disclosure pursuant to the uh, section 20 of chapter 20, the act of 2021, and after the extending the certain uh, COVID 19 measures um, adopting during the state of emergency, the meeting for the Conservation Commission for the town of Bridgewater will be held hybrid and accessible to the public through remote participation and the greatest extent possible. There will be no public attendance permitted. Citizens who wish to join the meeting may do so via Zoom um, and click onto the link below that's found on our, our website at um, Bridgewater. Town of Bridgewater, and there's a call in number there also. On tonight's agenda, um, I'm just going to give a little quickie thing on the agenda. So, present with me tonight is um, Eileen Prisco, Harry Bailey, members Mark Peterson. I am stepping into the chair for the moment. She's running late, and she I'm will... here, Marilyn. Yeah, you're in. Great. Okay. Yep. Um, and she is here. So, uh, I'm just going to open the first one quickly because that is. Bob can tell us we just got a continuation notice you need on to, that. Marilyn, you have to call the meeting to order. Oh, call the meeting to order. I forgot about that. So we're going to call the calling the meeting to order. Uh, first on is public hearings. We have under old business, uh, notice of intent zero lecture. We have notice of intent 180 Broad Street. We have notice of intent 18 Bedford Street. And um, we have new business, which I believe should be old um, 350 Cross. And then we have some conservation administrative items. I do, not, do, not, do believe we do not have any minutes. And at this time, Wendy, I'll hand it over to you. Good time making it back from the train station. <laughs> yes. Um, hi, everybody. So um, we talked earlier, Marilyn and I discussed about, um, do we need to make a motion? With no, Wendy, let me bring up the speed. So you, the Lakeshore had submitted and it was distributed yesterday a request for a continuance. Um, oh. so you need to have a motion to okay uh, to continue allow for the continuance to the okay. August eighth meeting. All right. Yeah, I'll so, make a. I, I'm sorry, I, I missed that email. Uh, so I will motion for notice of intent zero Lakeshore map eighty through uh, lot eighty five. Uh, requested the applicant for August eighth meeting. Yep. Second. So you have a motion and a second. You need a roll call vote, Wendy. Oh, I'm picking up on that. Okay, so roll call vote. Uh, Marilyn? Aye. Mark? Mark can't vote. Oh, Eileen? Aye. And is Harry on? Yes. Harry? Aye. Thank you. Um, okay. Wendy, are you going to vote? Uh, oh, and myself. Jeez, Bob, what would we do without you? When are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the plane right now. And myself, I. <laughs> Okay, so Lakeshore Center has been continued to August 8th. Um, next up, we have a notice of intent for 180 Broad Street, Map 21, Lot 143, 144, 149, and 150. The applicant representative is Edgewood Development Company, LLC, Park Corporation. Um, the DP file number is SE116-1543. And um do we want what do we want to do um somebody from the third party is brandon are you on or is margaret here to discuss the i was with the applicants that yeah so brandon is here mr metzler is here and well as lauren cluck so they have their entire not their entire team but their Pretty key much players their are team. here okay so does anybody want to go over what was discussed yesterday um and then we can have discussion. Steve, did you want to say anything first, or? Yeah, I could just open it up. Uh, as as you all know, there was a, a site visit on Tuesday, and also I guess uh, some others followed up today. Um, and uh, we did get some suggestions from um, the peer review, uh, and uh, I think that what was discussed down there was adding some uh, stabilization core logs. Uh, maybe some willow sticks or, or other um, natural uh, ways to um, stop the um, erosion. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and also maybe terracing the the walk. And and we're amenable to all of that. Uh, I suppose that it could be become a condition of 
of the uh, of the approval. That's what mm -hmm. I'm hoping. But I'll let uh, I'll let uh, Brandon and Lauren talk to the um, the technicalities of that because that's beyond my expertise. Okay. Um, I'll let Lauren go first. That's all right. <laughs> Certainly. Um, yeah, so I also had a chance to review the uh, peer review comments, and I believe Lauren, Lauren, I know you've done it before. Just name address for the record, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Lauren no, Gluck. Um, I'm with Parr Corporation, um, 10 Lincoln Road, Foxborough. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Um, sorry. So, yeah, so I reviewed the comments. Um, my colleague, Seaver, attended the site walk, so I was not present, um, but he kind of relayed the feedback, which was consistent with the feedback that we got today in the letter. Um, and just, you know, I don't have much to add on to what Steve said. We're, we're happy to incorporate those measures into our plan set. Um, they're pretty minor changes. So um, not sure if Brandon had anything else to add. Okay. Uh, Brandon Fanoff, Ecosystem Solutions, 100 Jefferson Boulevard, uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Lauren. Um, so uh, at the, the site meeting um, the other day, uh, Margaret Bacon from my office uh, attended, and I'm kind of glad that she did because I, I, I couldn't make it, so she attended. And I think it was beneficial because Margaret, not only is she a professional wetland scientist, but she's also a professional engineer has a lot of experience with stormwater and, and grading and things like that. Um, so she was, I think she was able to make some uh, valuable comments uh, out in the field. And she provided a, a report uh, dated yesterday, July 24th. I'll go quickly over uh, the bullet points in her comments. Mm -hmm. uh, she states there was a significant number of invasive species observed in this area. When we're talking about the area with the parking lot and the the walking path down to a proposed canoe launch on the town rivers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she also says there's a lot of evidence of historic fill and debris. Uh, she states the plan uh, shows an extensive amount of grading next to the river that is required for the proposed canoe launch, which we know. The slope of the canoe launch access path is steep. Um, she writes 16% slope. The newly graded slopes to the canoe path vary from approximately one to one to three to one slope. Uh, the proposed grading and canoe path could be vulnerable to erosion and scour if the appropriate stabilization member, uh, measures are not implemented. Uh, the applicant's engineer may want to investigate the following to ensure that the resource areas are protected and this area remains stable. And our comments are, Investigate bioengineering methods to help stabilize the cut slopes quickly and long-term uh, to provide a more natural protective measure. See attached PDF of typical bioengineering practices for discussion purposes. And in the report, there's an attachment on uh, uh, bioengineering. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the engineer may want to investigate some type of drainage swale along the edge of the canoe launch that will help protect the path from the scouring effects of stormwater, since this area, due to the proposed grading, will also uh, function as a stormwater swale. That's one of the things she was concerned about is that uh, the uh, path itself may end up being a kind of sluice way going down to the river. So those were, those were her comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Um, okay. So there was a lot of useless, uh, useless, no, I meant to say useful information in the packet that has all the different types of bioengineering that could be um, implemented. Um, so I appreciated everybody coming out yesterday. It really gave us um, a good look at, you know, the steepness of the bank there and what's happening. And um, I did meet with Marilyn today. So we were able to take a walk out again so Marilyn could see it. Um, so someone on conservation besides myself um, want to start off with comments or concerns? I can start off and, th and thanks for meeting me. And um, I apologize for the last minute change that I couldn't make the site walk. So I myself, Brandon, wasn't there, but I had met Margaret before. So um, 
I can't agree more with what they've, they've said. And that's my only concern too. And having dealt with slopes, um, you know, especially in soil, you know, rainfall comes quick, stabilizing them for safety in the riverbank. I think it's an environmental improvement out there. I think the collaboration and the added advice that's coming in from ECHO is, is fabulous. And, and that's my main thing is, is, is stabilizing that you got to have a, you know, when I went out there, I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, it's, you know, stabilizing, you can definitely, you know, see that it had uh, degenerated areas. There's no, you know, I'm not, but I think um, they're right on with just um, helping you guys support that slope. And um, otherwise, you know, you're looking good as far as I, I can see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Marilyn. Um, Eileen, you were out there yesterday. Do you have any comments, or? Um, I'm I'm all for the um, graduated steps with the um, supports, and then the core locks to stabilize the one to three slopes in that area there that we looked at, going down to the water. I'm not sure if there's anything else, but they do also they did also mention willow sticks. Mm -hmm. The core logs would be better on that uh, waterfront area. And the swale is ideal. I didn't. I didn't realize there was a swale. That's perfect. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, I think you can do. You can do both willow sticks and core logs, can't you, Lauren? You can. I think. Yeah. Well, uh, I think the core logs are more. Well, oh, the water edge. The edge. Yeah. And the sticks maybe on the slope. Yeah. Uh, whatever they, you know. I think given all the information and they, um, between Lauren Seaver, I mean, they really had a good, have a good grasp on, you know, now that we've really taken a look at it, what they would probably use, but that's stuff that we would want incorporated. Yep. Thanks, Eileen. Um, Mark, you were out there yesterday. Do you have any comments? Yeah, I think, I think the core logs should help and then the, the live stakes should help. Um, I was doing just a quick research. There are different, there are more types of plants out there that you can use for for live staking out there. But I don't know if they would hold up as much against the erosion. But willow and and the dog or the dogwood seem seem to be fine. Mm -hmm. Probably want some things too that aren't real high maintenance, right? Something that's going to be low, not necessarily really high, <clears throat> and not need a lot. Um. Harry, do you have anything, any questions that you have? Because you didn't get to make the site visit. I don't have to make the site visit. My okay, I was just asking if you Harry had any questions. Stanley. I'm also the chair of the Taunton River Stewardship Council. Um, we have a river access committee, and that lady is sitting in attendance today. Just because the river runs through the property doesn't mean you can do whatever you want with it. Town River being a tributary to the River comes under our authority. I would suggest Harry, you're breaking you get a hold up. of we're not Harry. The River Access Committee. Harry, we can't hear you. Yeah. I don't think his statement that they're trying to do whatever they want is accurate or appropriate. No. I mean, the rest so of you can... Harry, if you're listening, you know, I'm always with you on the 25 foot. This is an area that has been degraded and it actually would be an environmental improvement to that mm -hmm. riverfront area. Um, so that's why I feel it, it does meet the standards and it is important. It's just the stability of it, but it, it, it's, in, it's in poor condition. In fact, I, I would have liked to seen it dredged out a little bit to improve the river um, at that point, but you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's an improvement environmentally and it's a good stability. Right now it's, you can even see a shimmer of um, film out there, so. Mm. So, Wendy, the, the public hearing is still open. If you want, you can see if there's any additional public comment. And if Harry reconnects before you close the public hearing, Harry will have a chance to comment. Then okay. whenever, if there's a motion, you can comment as well. Okay. So um, I would just, if somebody from the public wants to speak, 
you, you you, the raise your hand uh, feature or put your camera on and raise your hand. Uh, just give me a minute to scroll through everyone. If all fails, you can put something in the chat that you want to be recognized. I am not seeing any hands raised, people making obscene gestures towards me on camera or anything in the chat. <laughs> well, I'm glad that nobody's doing that, Bob. That's early. <laughs> I did it off camera, Bob. I, I hope so. <laughs> no, I don't. Harry, can you? Are you reconnected? I don't know. Can you hear me now? No, you're kind of sounding. It's like still a, bubbly like sounding. I think he, you've got the gist of what Harry was trying to say. I mean, he's very passionate about the Taunton River and its tributaries and his involvement in that. But again, I think that maybe a little bit misclassification that Edgewood is doing whatever they want because we wouldn't be having this meeting if that was the case. Right. I would like to ask Brandon one more thing though, um, on the, on the um, monitoring, because that with that area, you know, that much restoration, that kind of sort of thing invasion. I mean, I think definitely more than two years. And I know um, they're very open to that with us on a condition. But, um, my thought was four to five. What, any thoughts on your end? Well, two is the standard, um, yeah. but the, here's the thing is that, uh, you know, you have home rule, right? You have your own bylaws, so you can you can set it however you want, however you think uh, will uh, protect the interests of the act and under the bylaws. So if you want to go four or five, that is your prerogative. I'd like to see four or five. The rest of the conservation members can weigh in. Yeah, five, four or five. That'd be good. We're we're uh, managing the property, owning the property. We're out Anyways, there. Anyways, right? So, yeah, so we're yeah. We're, we'll be keeping it keeping it up and keeping it clean. So Wendy, at this point, with no further public comment, right. so we have welcome. no further comments or questions. Um, do we have a motion to close the hearing? Actually, I do have one question for Steve. Oh no, you're done, Marilyn. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve, do you, do you guys need like? The incorporation with Brandon's engineer, Margaret, there, do you, are you good with everything or do you need time to kind of incorporate it yourself? Do you want us just to close and come back with conditions or are you good with us, like with, with what you've seen in that review? Yeah, no, I'm good with that. If, you, if you're ready to close and come back with conditions, I think that, that everybody knows what we're looking at at this point. Okay. All right. So, just wanted to make sure you had a chance to weigh in on that. Yeah. So, Marilyn, what I would suggest with respect to that is that the report that Brandon shared tonight, Lawrence comments that if you, whatever action you take, if the order of conditions is gonna be issued, make your motion subject to us getting all that information so mm -hmm. we can draft the order of conditions, make sure it's accurate, incorporates it, gets it out to everyone. So we can keep this moving, but rather than have a flawed motion in terms of capturing everything that's been discussed, I think it's a lot cleaner to do it that way. Just That's a good idea, Bob. Perfect. That was my concern. So then I would make a motion for the chair to entertain um, closing 180 Broad Street, uh, map 21, lot 143, 144, 149, 150. Second. Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. Marilyn McDonald. Aye. Eileen Prisco. Aye. Mark Peterson. Aye. Gary Bailey. No. I don't see it. We're just closing the hearing right now. But okay, myself, Wendy Smith, I. Um, okay, so I'm a little confused. Are we? I got to... okay. Yep, we can uh, do just what Bob suggested. Um, I would make a motion then to approve 180 Broad Street, map 21, lot 143, 144, 149, 150, with a draft of the order of conditions that we just talked about um, and the, um, you know, five-year monitoring plan they are going to be on site but a draft first um, mm -hmm. so okay that sounds as, good as stated all right eileen was that a second yep okay well, with a second so roll call vote marilyn aye eileen aye harry he's muted harry muted no. Okay. Mark? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. 
All right. So Steve and company, you guys should be all set and um, we'll okay, so get we're, that we're, together down at the office. Yeah. So is this now administrative? Are we coming back to the. You don't need to come back. So what will happen is we'll gather all the reports that Lauren and Brandon and Brandon staff has done yep. and draft the order of conditions, incorporating the five year monitoring yep. and the core, the willow sticks. And then we'll give a chance for everybody to look at that yourself and then members of the concom. If everyone's in agreement, then it'll be well, it'll be you don't have to come back, I guess is what I'm saying. Great. I, I want to thank you, everybody. I appreciate the hard work that everybody's done on this. Um, it's all been for the for the yes. best of the project. So. Thank you. And if Brandon's still on, Brandon, thank you for your peer review for conservation. Thank you. Yes, thank and, you, everybody. And of course, Lauren, who did a great job. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh. And Seaver. <laughs> and Seaver, too. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, we all. We are all set. Great. Thanks. Have a good night. You, too. Um, next up, we have a notice of intent for 815 Bedford Street, map 88, lot 23. Um, that has been continued until August 8th. Do I need to do a motion or because they- No, we voted on it last meeting. Yeah, I think it was already voted on. Oh, that one was? Okay. Yeah, we voted on it and last meeting. And then what about the, it's under new business, but it really was old because it was opened and we looked at plans. That's um, been, that was voted on to continue as well. Yes. So the notice of intent for zero and 350 cross uh, map 118, lot 89, 23, 24, and 25. The file number is SE 116, 1550 is continued also to August 8th. Um, next up, we have conservation commission business. So I mentioned this to uh, Marilyn before you got here. Oh, everyone before you got here. Um, I think we need to rescind the cease and desist that we had issued to Claremont for the river access activities. Um, because, I mean, I think all that was determined is was the only violation was they were outside of the allowable dates for the work. I think the site visit, and, and I'm basing this on our conversation, Wendy, that it was determined that they didn't do any cutting that they weren't authorized to do. Right. I And I think that that was... Um... When I talked with you, I think it was before I saw pictures and the pictures that they had from the very beginning, like it was difficult to, you can't really look at them. I can't look at them and know whether or not like what they were. Most of the vegetation in that area is invasive, but it was hard to tell like if there's any trees that they need to replant. Um, but they you know, as long as they cleared out the brush, because there was some brush in there that the order of conditions does say that they are supposed to take away any anything that they've cut um, or trimmed down. And there were a few piles. And when we met down there, they did mention that if you want that taken out, we will take it out. And they were going to pay closer attention to the cutting time. Um, those were the two things. But <clears throat> Um, what did you say that we should do with that? Just, we had issued a cease and desist. We just wanted, I mean, we had this similar to the Bedford Street property. Just allow me to rescind that. Withdraw the cease and desist. There's no reason to keep that open. So We're not doing to, anything. Uh, I'm going to weigh in on this. Like it's a doing. <clears throat> Unfortunately, yeah. with my scheduling, it, I just did not get a chance to get out there. And it's not an open hearing on the cease and desist. It, like we don't have a 21 day that we have to render a decision. I'd like to look at the order of conditions sure. a little bit more and take a little bit more look before we rescind it. Um, that's so fine. That's my take. The other commissioners can weigh in again. No, that, I mean, I that's, that's fine. I just don't, I don't want to keep something lingering out there and we forget about it. So, you know, we can bring it up again on August 8th if you have a chance to get out there. Before. Yeah, we can keep it under conservation business and just, you know, give I'm, it to us to get it looked at further. I'm okay with that. Okay. And there was also something that there might be a discrepancy um, in the deed to the property and the special order of conditions that was looked at, they don't have to call us in the order of condition, the special order of conditions that I looked at um, from whenever we, that we was. We can't get into much further conversation about this other than if we're not going to rescind, 
the cease and desist, we just leave it at that. We'll bring it up on the eighth because it's it's not on the agenda for any other discussion. Oh, okay. All right. August eighth, we'll discuss. I mean, it. if you like, we can make it a specific agenda item for August eighth. I think that's going to be the more appropriate thing to do. So you can raise the questions that you're raising right now, Wendy. And right. We'll be in well, compliance with the open from yeah, that's fine. From what I saw and. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Um, so was that the only thing that you wanted to bring up? Bob, when's your last day with us? Uh, the I think it's the 22nd, August 22nd meeting. So the end of the summer meeting, that's yeah. going to be. There's probably like a barbecue or something you're going to have for that. Or... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mac bash. We're going to have it on the town green. <laughs> Great. I think we have... Um... <laughs> We can bring up one more thing under conservation business, and it's just getting the quorum, um, you know, especially with Bob's time. I think the best thing is just to make sure we have a point person to dedicate a time so that when they do reach out to the applicant or the a third party, that they can we can get the best times for everybody. So, Wendy, it can either be you or I that one of us just make sure that we call each member, um, you know, so we get everybody's good time slot before we throw a time out to you know, to site that. visits. Yeah. That's okay. kind of how we would roll with it. Yeah. I think Wendy just said, thank you for taking that, Marilyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do my I best. Did. Did you on the phone, so. <laughs> I will that say the can, meeting is a lot. We to them the time that works best for the commission versus kind of like trying to free roll it. Yeah. Guys, um, thoughts on that, Mark? Um, Eileen, you on? Yeah, I mean, we can't post it till we know we're going to have a quorum, and we'll put we'll post it them before we know we have a quorum. It makes no sense, right? We did it that way before. I'll take that role then, Wendy. Okay, Marilyn. <laughs> and Thank I did Thank we you. have minutes? Because I didn't. I was a bad girl. No, there are no, no there minutes. weren't any. All right. No. Then, um, anybody else with any conservation business? We could. No, but this was a much shorter meeting that I had anticipated. I, I didn't think I'd make the chicken in the oven with my husband, but I guess I will. So number E, she I, can make uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I, I ask a question. I ask a question. Um, as we get more like peer reviews coming in, and we get them through email, um, does the does the public get any knowledge that, that we get peer reviews? Um, they, they know that you've re if they're in at the meeting or paying attention to the meeting or look at it afterwards, they know that a peer review has been requested. Once you all get an opportunity to receive and review the peer review, we've been putting them in the share drive. We don't put them out before members of the committee have a chance to see it. So that's at the discretion of the chair or the vice chair when they want the public to see that. Basically, so there's no errors, Mark. Like if we had released the 180 broad, it would have been the wrong peer review team that we had to vote. To. So basically making sure that, that that peer review did what we asked as far as looking at the notice intent, things like that. And then once we get it in, that we'd love to share. So, you know, once we make sure it's the appropriate information we asked for, yeah. um, we, we get it out there. Yep. So, so would the public just ask like every day, is there anything new? Is there anything new? <laughs> I think, Bob, with conservation, you guys don't run like planning. I think there's not always, I, I'm not staff, so I don't really know, but I know, I, I think they have to call the office for more information updated on, on conservation versus other committees, I believe. Is that the case, Bob? I mean, we have, you know, Nicole does her best when we get either a butters comments, letters, documentation, we share it with you, and then she puts it on the share drive. Um, we're not reaching out to everyone that's ever contacted us to let them know that something is on the share drive. I think, you know, most people that have access to the share drive are checking at it on a fairly regular basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Bob. All right. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't second. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to say it. Somebody else? <laughs> We want to continue the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> did Mark, did you second? <laughs> yes, yes. All I'm saying. <laughs> all right, who's doing this? <laughs> say all in favor, Wendy. All in favor. <laughs> bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right. Bye. Bye, bye. everybody. Thanks.